I grew up in Perth and I, I moved to Sydney back in about 2004 and studied. And after that, I kind of didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I eventually got back into filmmaking. I shot, financed and directed my own feature film in about 2008, 2009. Coming back from LA, I stopped through Sydney and um, caught up with an old friend and he introduced me to another filmmaker. I'd remembered Chewie from years ago when he was working the doors in Perth. I used to go in there and we never really spoke much. I don't think we knew that we were both into filmmaking back then. So Mr. Barkey, you've come a long way. Perth to LA and then back to Perth and to Sydney, then back to Perth. And we went out for a beer and he told me his story and he told me what he'd be doing for the last few years and I was just inspired. I couldn't believe it. You know, here was someone who had literally gone all out, sold everything he had and had put everything into pursuing this dream. And Matt and myself got along straight away. We both had, you know, very similar interests, both addicted to film, you know, both had sacrificed so much to make films. At the time I was shooting a kind of a workshop slash pilot for this idea. I didn't quite know what it was gonna be. It was gonna be a two day shoot and I said to Chewie, why don't you stay with me? Sleep on my couch, because he was used to sleeping on couches by that stage. He ended up giving me one of the roles in it as, as a biker. How did it go? And we just got along like a house on fire. It was very exciting and I thought, look, I'll, let's do something together. Let's either work on one of your films or maybe do one of mine and we'll just bounce back and forth. In 2009, I went to a screenwriters expo and I sat in on one of the classes there and the lecturer pulled out a $1 bill. And on that $1 bill, it said, in 2008, I will run a marathon. And then the lecturer said at that time, you know, he couldn't even run around the block, let alone run a marathon. And slowly but surely he worked at it and he's, he just started running and then by the end of 2008 he actually entered a, into a marathon and finished it. And he said, all right, I want everyone in the class to pull out a $1 note out of their pocket. And then he said, all right, I want you to write on that $1 note what you hope to achieve by the end of this year. On my $1 note I wrote, by the end of 2010 I will make a feature film. When Chewie was in LA, I had gone to London on a holiday and so we were keeping in contact via email and I was getting little snippets of what he was up to and he told me about this writing workshop. So I walked out of that class and I felt somewhat inspired and I just thought, all right, well, you know, Gentech Wars is too big, there's no way that I can make that idea, you know, with no money. So I thought, well, I'm going to have to come up with a new idea. I was walking down Sunset Strip in Hollywood when this guy handed me a flyer for the Psychiatry Museum. Well, it sort of interests me because my family has, you know, a sordid past with mental illness. Anyway, I walked in there and, you know, it just struck me. I thought, well, this is, you know, this is a feature film right here. The stuff that's happened to these people over the last few hundred years is insane. It's, it's you know, truth stranger than fiction. I went back to Barney's house and I started writing this and I started emailing Matt telling him that I've come up with this idea for a new feature film. And he basically laid out his plans, his vision, which was he was going to make a film. It wasn't going to be Gentech Wars, but it was going to be something else. And it was going to be independent, it was going to be wild, it was going to be very doable, and he needed me to help him. At that stage, that was what Bedlam was, just an idea.